right, everybody, we're going to move on to one of the black sheep of the connective tissue disorders, and that is mixed connective tissue disease. Now, before you watch this, I want you to watch all my other videos on connective tissue diseases. So lupus and uh, polymyositis and rheumatoid arthritis and Sjogren's syndrome, they're all going to be very, very important because um, this disease incorporates a little bit of each of them. So uh, this is kind of a culmination of all those connective tissue disorders. And this is very difficult to diagnose. Uh, fortunately, it is rare, uh, but you'll want to have a surface level understanding of this disease because it does get tested even though it's rare. All right, if you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button in the upper right-hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. Definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications every time I put a new video up. All right, so what is mixed connective tissue disease? It is an overlap syndrome. So uh, basically what happens here is that you don't fit any of the criteria for the other, um, you don't fit all the criteria uh, for the other connective tissue disorders. Um, rather, you take a little bit from each of them. And with mixed connective tissue disease, what you specifically see are features of lupus uh, inflammatory myositis, that can be polymyositis usually, it could be dermatomyositis, I suppose, and systemic sclerosis. Um, so you've got features of all three of these. Now, Raynaud's phenomenon is present in 90% of these patients. However, unfortunately, Raynaud's phenomenon is just not very specific. Um, it is rare. However, when it does show up, it's usually in women. So what kind of features do we expect to see? Well, I color-coded all of these um, so you can see which features correspond to which, but some of these are in black, so that's uh, uh, those are more nonspecific. So you can get Raynaud's. Uh, you can get these swollen, puffy fingers. That's actually a little bit more specific for MCTD. Um, so what you'll see is that they are actually swollen. They're not thick like you would see in um, systemic sclerosis. You can get sclerodactyly, nail fold, vascular changes, uh, malar rash um, like lupus, a Gotrin's rash like we would see in uh, myositis, and uh, then you can also get calcinosis. Uh, musculoskeletally, you can get a proximal muscular weakness. That's what we would see in polymyositis, dermatomyositis, arthralgias, small joint arthritis, pulmonary. You can get basically a, a, an interstitial disease like we would see in systemic sclerosis. Um, heart, you can get an AV block, which we would see in systemic sclerosis. GI, you can get reflux or dysphagia like we would see in systemic sclerosis. Remember, that falls under um, the CREST syndrome. That's the E in CREST, esophageal disturbances. Uh, hematologically, because this is chronic inflammation, you can get anemia of chronic disease. You can also get a lymphopenia or even a pancytopenia. Um, and then there are other manifestations like Sicca syndrome, similar to what we would see in Sjogren's. Uh, renal involvement, uh, and then uh, serositis, which we would see in lupus. So while ANA is the best initial test, the most specific test is something called an anti-U1 ribonucleoprotein. You'll see it often written as anti-U1 RNP. And this is our specific uh, autoantibody for MCTD. Okay, so this is what you want to order, and this will almost always be elevated, um, present in patients with MCTD. Now, not always. Um, however, there's another thing called overlap syndrome or overlap connective tissue disease, um, which is not MCTD, um, in that because MCTD is taking specifically features of polymyositis, lupus and systemic sclerosis. But it is possible, let's say you've got a little bit of Sjogren's syndrome and a little bit of RA and maybe a little bit of uh, polymyositis, okay? That would be um, an overlap disorder. And you may not fit all the criteria for each one of those, but you have symptoms from each one of those. So that would be an overlap.
Okay, but MCTD is particularly the polymyositis with the lupus with the systemic sclerosis. So this is this is what I would do for an initial workup. See, the thing is, is that you've got a patient coming in with MCTD. You don't know what they have. Is it lupus? Is it polymyositis? Is it systemic sclerosis? We don't know. So you're going to check for all of them. Get your routine lab, CBC, BMP. We're looking for um, anemia of chronic disease. We're looking for renal dysfunction. Uh, get a urinalysis because some of these come with glomerulonephritis. Get a rheumatoid factor and an anti-CCP, looking for rheumatoid arthritis. Get an ANA, it's the best initial test. It's kind of a screening test for all these other things. Um, so we'll get that anti-U1 ribonucleoprotein that is more specific for MCTD, and then you'll get anti-Smith, anti-DSDNA, looking for uh, lupus, anti-JO1, and anti-SCL70. Um, the latter uh, is looking for systemic sclerosis. Anti-JO1, by the way, is polymyositis, dermatomyositis. So if none of that sounds familiar, go back and watch the individual videos. And this is what you'll see. The big one here, the anti-U1 ribonucleoprotein, it is most specific for MCTD. And the treatment is individualized based on the symptoms. So uh, if all of this looks overwhelming, I promise you it's not that bad. Just go back and watch the other videos because we are treating each of these symptoms the same way, for instance, that you would treat it in lupus or that you would treat it in RA or that you would treat it in Sjogren's or that you would treat it in other ones. So um, if you know how to treat those other connective tissue disorders, you will know how to treat MCTD. There's no silver bullet, we just treat it symptomatically.